When you're on a flight, do you want a pilot right out of flight school, or do you want somebody with a few thousand hours under their belt? If you're having surgery, do you want a surgeon right out of med school, or do you want somebody who's done the surgery a few times? Well, it's not really any different with IT. You don't want somebody green working on your servers, implementing your Active Directory, configuring your firewalls and security. You want somebody with some experience, somebody who's actually done what they're about to do in your production environment. Well, that can be really difficult for a new learner. So at IT Pro TV, we have to approach this a few different ways. You know, first we have our video content. You watch it, you learn, you engage with the edutainer, you actually get an idea of how you're supposed to carry out your, your IT related tasks. But then you need to practice. You need to get some hands-on experience applying that. And that's where our virtual labs come in. With our virtual labs, you can fire up an environment very, very quickly that is running the same software or the same hardware that you're going to use in the real world. And you can go through the process of implementing a technology all without the risk of damaging a production environment. And you can run through it over and over and over again, which leads to great retention, right? We have a saying around here, which is repetition leads to retention. The more you do a task, the more you're going to retain that and it becomes part of your rote memory. And now it's part of your tool set when you're out there in the real world. All right, so let me show you our lab environment and give you kind of a walkthrough of how it works. First off, you know, you're going to be watching a show. Like I'm, I'm watching this show here on CCNA routing. Uh, Ronnie is teaching me all about it. He's on a Cisco switch. He's implementing some commands. I watch and I learn. All right, now that's great. Everything he's doing right now, I'm going to remember an hour from now, maybe even a week from now. But a month, two months from now, if I'm not actually doing this myself, I'm going to start forgetting, right? So I need a way to practice. And also, Ronnie is showing me one way to do things. What if I want to try it a slightly different way? Well, I can't do that just by watching. I need hands-on. So with most of our courses, what you'll see is right at the top of the video screen is a Show Virtual Labs link. And if you click on Show Virtual Labs, you'll see the labs that align with that particular course that you're in. But the reality is we have over 800 virtual labs. On the left side here, if I go to Virtual Labs, you'll see the full list, which it takes a moment to load. It is a massive screen. If you watch the little scroll bar on the right side of my screen, it is barely moving with each page that I go down. There are tons and tons of labs. But when you find the right one for what you're working on, you can launch the environment and it'll bring you into this screen. And what you're going to see is, well, it can be a little bit different depending on your course. This is a Cisco course. If I want to learn Cisco hardware, I need access to Cisco routers, Cisco switches, and Cisco firewalls. Now, there's virtualization software out there. There's uh, emulators and simulators. Those are great, but they don't have the full set of commands that you'll run into in the real world. And then physical hardware behaves a lot differently than software. There's a lot of things that don't work in the software versions. And when you're in the real world, you're working with the real equipment. So when you fire up a Cisco virtual lab on our site, it's not an emulator or a simulator, it's real hardware. What I'm looking at right here is this lab. It has three routers, three switches, and one server. And those routers and switches, that's real hardware. And so when I go into my virtual lab environment, and I pull up the console for NY Edge 1, that's a real device. I'm now connected into it, and if I do show version, it's gonna pull, oh, I do have to spell it right. Uh, if you spell it wrong, it doesn't work on real equipment. And then I can jump in, and I can see the version of that software, the version of that hardware, an idea of how it's configured and its interface statuses and so on. Every command supported on real equipment is supported here because it is real equipment. The other nice thing about this is, I didn't have to buy it. I didn't have to buy these routers and switches. I can just use them here in the lab. And if I mess them up, who cares? When I close out of the environment, all of the changes get thrown away and I come back into a nice, clean system. I just logged into this virtual lab. Everything in here is configured nice and clean, ready for me to get in and work. Now, when you jump into a lab environment, there's a few different ways you can use it, right? One way is just as a sandbox. I'm logged into the lab environment. I have these routers, I have this server, I can experiment around, right? This is a Cisco lab, but you know what? Maybe I don't want to learn Cisco today. So today I'm going to mess around with Windows Server. Maybe I'm going to promote this machine to be a domain controller. I can do that. This is a fully licensed version of Microsoft Windows Server. So everything you can do in the software, you can do right here, right? So that's a, a sandbox approach. If you're experimenting, if you're learning, if, you, if you're going to be doing something in your production environment, you just want to test it out somewhere, the lab is great for that, right? But if I'm studying for an exam, there's likely certain activities that I'm trying to learn. Maybe it's something I saw one of the IT Pro TV edutainers do. So I saw Ronnie configure a VLAN. I want to configure the same VLAN. So I could go in and do that. Or if we just want to go through our own exercises. Well, 
the labs actually do have step-by-step -step labs built into them. If I expand out my left sidebar, what you'll see is I'm in the ICND2 version 3.0 course. I see the topology. That's where that map came from a moment ago. Uh, and, and we can make this bigger just so we can see that map a little bit better. Uh, and all the interfaces are labeled so I know how the hardware is connected. Now this is real hardware in a remote data center so I can't go move a cable. I need to rely on this map to know where the cables are plugged in. But then as I move forward, it's going to put me into the step-by-step -step labs. See how it took away my Windows machine and swapped me back to a router uh, prompt? Well, that's because on the first step, I'm going to be working with that router. And it's telling me to jump into configuration and create VLANs 10 and VLAN 20. And if I go through and start to do that, I should expect certain information back. And so that's what it's telling me afterwards is how to be able to check that and make sure that the interfaces are in their trunking modes and so on. And we can go through that process. The nice part here is that we go through the lab, we're guided through it, it gives me the commands. Well, maybe I go through the lab once or twice to familiarize myself with it. And then I say, you know what? I'm gonna try it on my own. Let me try it without the step-by-step. -step. Can I just do it from memory? Can I configure VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and configure two interfaces to be trunks? And we go through and we do it that way. That repetition is really key to learning. So in this case, Ronnie may have taught me how to configure the trunks, and then I come into the lab and I follow the lab steps to learn all of that in practice. And at the end of the day, I'm now able to log into this environment and configure those trunks by myself without Ronnie having to look over my shoulder and without the step-by-step -step lab. Now, that is just an example of one way that people use these and it's very, very effective. Hands-on learners need to learn this way. Some people can learn just by reading a book. Most people can't. So having this reinforcement is super critical to, to actually learning. Now, there's a few other neat features in here when you're working with these devices. For example, let's say I mock up some really good configuration on this switch. If I do a show running-config and pull up my configuration, I might say, wow, I really like this config. I want to use it on my workplace devices. Well, I can just highlight and copy and paste and so now I can copy and paste into a document on my own computer and then I can use that wherever I want. But what about the other way around? What if I've already got a configuration from my own system and I want to paste it in here? Well, there's actually a special clipboard system right here where you can put in text and then shoot it over to the virtual machine on the other side. Now it's an extra step for security reasons. We don't want to constantly be sending your clipboard to these virtual machines. You might copy a password or something. So here you have total control of moving that data between your own machine and that virtual lab. So a really nice feature to have there. Uh, there's also a few other things. You'll notice the, the different icons up here like clearing the terminal. On Cisco devices, every now and then the terminal can get a little messed up when it renders data, and so you can kind of reset it. In real life, it would be the equivalent of like unplugging and replugging in a console cable. Or you can hide this particular device. If I hide it, it makes it go away. And if I've got more than one device open, now I'll just see the single device that I, I haven't hidden. On Windows servers, that's pretty handy as well. Oops, clicked the wrong button there. Actually, you know, let's, let's talk about that button that I clicked. I remember how I mentioned that if I mess up a device, I can just close the whole environment. It all resets and then I can come back in. Well, maybe I just mess up one device. Well, if I do, I can just hit the reset link on that one device, which I just hit by accident. And when I do that, it's gonna go in and reset that one. So NY Core 1 is shutting down. Now, way off in the distance in a data center right now, there is a switch that is shutting down. And when it powers back on, it's gonna power on with a clean configuration and then I'll connect back and have that console. So when it says busy here, there's actual physical hardware that's rebooting. And unlike a simulator, physical hardware takes a good three to six minutes to reboot. And so that'll come back up as soon as that's done. In the meantime, I can still use the rest of the environment and move around and access those other devices and continue to work. There are some more advanced functions in here uh, as far as like fitting devices to page with. If you switch to a larger monitor, you can actually stretch these devices out to fit that way. And some personal configuration options. If I go under the gear, you'll see where I can enable things like what my time zone is and whether I want things like device pop-up mode. Everything I've shown you so far has had the desktops embedded in the web browser. In pop-up mode, each device will come out into its own window. And that's really nice. Like I'm on my laptop here, so I kind of have limited screen real estate, but back in my office, I have a nice 27 inch monitor. And so I can spread these little desktops out and actually see more than one device at once and work through that lab environment. Really, really cool to have that kind of a thing. 
There's also full accessibility support, and the accessibility support is really nice, especially on the Cisco world, because it creates a separate command input, so you can type in uh, and use whatever accessibility software you might be using for text input, uh, high contrast mode, and a handful of other things. So these are all nice little features that are built into this lab environment. Another really cool thing that not a lot of people know about is that the virtual lab environment works perfectly fine on mobile devices. So if I'm on an iPad and I fire up Safari and I log into the IT Pro TV website and I go to launch a lab, guess what? It launches. And so now I'm in a Cisco router or I'm in a Windows server or a Linux server right there from my iPad and I can go through and I can do the lab. Now, typing on an iPad is not fun unless you have an external keyboard, but you can do it, which means learning on the go becomes something that's very, very achievable. All right, well, that's a quick tour of the IT Pro TV lab platform and how you can use it to reinforce that knowledge and make sure that when you go out into the actual workplace and you have to perform some activity, that it's not your first time. You're not a pilot right out of flight school or a surgeon right out of med school. You're somebody who's done that activity multiple times. You know the outcome and you know what to expect and you get in and do it successfully the first time. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my demo and I look forward to seeing you on IT Pro TV.